Today we're gonna to learn how to do click and drag from scratch. This is an effect that I saw on this website, Hover States. I scroll down to the bottom here and I notice that you can just, you can scroll this if you want. It's just a horizontally scrolling div, which is kind of cool because it works without JavaScript. However, you can also take your cursor, click and drag as you want to go through it. And I thought that was a kind of a cool effect. So that's what I would like to do here is when you click, drag your mouse and go somewhere, we want it sort of to come along with it. And uh, this whole like mouse event and mouse positioning stuff, I find it to be a little bit complicated. So I thought that this would be a really nice exercise to, to get us comfortable with what's going on here. So pretty simple what we've got going on here. I've got our style.css, which is just our CSS. I've added some sort of fun CSS to it. Like when you click it, we add a class of active and it will bring it up a little bit. And then I also use this uh, rotate Y and a perspective so that when you move it, you see how 17 is like, oh, can barely see it. Oh, now it's totally looking at us. Just some fun stuff. It has nothing to do with it other than it looks pretty. So let's go down to our script here. And really what we want to be doing here is selecting the items, which is this white box right here. And then we're going to be listening for a number of different events. So when I first click down, we're going to add a class of active and we're going to figure out where did I click down. Then when I move my mouse to either to the left or to the right, we're going to figure out, okay, if I, let's say if I click right here, this is 500 PX. And if I scroll to the left, 20 PX, we know that we should scroll the div 20 pixels. If I scroll to the right 20 pixels, we know that we should scroll the div 20 pixels that way. And that's really how it's going to work. We're just going to anchor it down as soon as we click. And then depending on how far either way we scroll, that's how much we're going to be scrolling the div. Or we can do it a multiple of that if you'd like for the scrolling to go a little bit bigger. So it's just a combination of mouse down, mouse leave, mouse out, up and mouse move. So let's first go ahead and grab the slider. So let's say const slider equals document.query selector. We are going to look for the items. That's the, the white div that surrounds everything. And then we need a couple of variables. They're all going to be let because they are going to be updated. So we're going to say let is down is equal to false. And that's going to be our flag variable. That's either going to be true or false, depending on if I'm clicking or if I'm not. And then we also need one called start X and scroll left. So we'll say let Start X and let scroll left. You notice how I'm not assigning any values to them because that's going to be happening in our events. And we'll understand exactly what these are in just a second. Then what we need to do is attach a whole bunch of different listeners. So we're going to be working with mouse down, mouse leave, mouse up, and mouse move. It's going to paste these in here. And we're going to listen for an event on each of them. So I'm going to, going to say slider.add event listener and you could farm these off to separate functions i'm going to do them in line just because right now i think it's important that we attach the code that is happening directly to the event however once you're done it'd be great to refactor those out into separate functions and then just pass them into your event listener like we've been doing with a lot of our videos so far so we got mouse down mouse leave mouse up and mouse move so first let's handle the uh, is down that's happening. So when someone mouses down, we're gonna take this is down variable and set it to true. When someone leaves, so, so I'm dragging here and then I leave this thing and come back, it, it shouldn't work because what happens is someone leaves, they come back, they let go and then they come back here and it's still in the down state. So what we need to then do is to take this is down and set that to be false. When someone mouses up, we want to set that to be false as well. And then in mouse move, that's where all of our magic is going to happen. So let's just inside of that console log is down. And then we're going to console log do work. So open that up, open up your console. I want to see what's going on here. And you see like I'm console logging like a lot here and I haven't even clicked anything. This console logging shouldn't show anything at all unless I'm actually mouse down. And if I click it and mouse around, we see true, true, true. I'll let go, false, false, false. So what we want to do first thing here is in our mouse move, we'll say if is not down, we are just going to return 
And what that will do is stop the function from running. And then this console log is down and do work won't get logged unless you are clicked in the click state. So here we go. Let go. Let me clear this out. See, I'm moving around. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Click down, move around. It starts to work. Let go. There's no updated. And we could console.log. I could change it to console.count and just to see how many times it happens. None, none, none. Drag, drag, drag. Good. And then it stops and then it goes again. Good. So we have that mouse down. Um, next thing I want to do is we'll take the slider. When you mouse down, we're going to take slider .add event listener. Nope. We'll take the slider class list .add active. And then we'll also do that uh, the opposite when someone leaves. So remove. And then when someone mouse is up, we will also remove class of active. Good. So now when you click it, you see you get a little bit of a effect there. Why is that happening? That's happening because if you look at our style.css, when we have a class of active, I just change the background, I change the cursor. You have to change it to WebKit. I didn't even know that you had to vendor prefix a cursor. It's been a while since I've seen that. Uh, and then transform the scale up to one. So it'll, it goes from 98% to one, just gives you a little bit of a, a cool effect that goes in and out. Now let's think about how this is going to work. When I click down here and I drag 20 pixels to the left or 20 pixels to the right, we need to know where that anchor point is when I scroll to the left or to the right, because as many times as I move around until I unclick or mouse up, we need to know where that initial click down was. And that's what that start X variable is for, where we created right here. So when someone clicks down, before they start moving to the left or to the right, we need to record where they did that initial click down. And that's going to happen in our mouse down here. And we're going to go up to our function and pass the event. Now, if we were to console log that event, let's just see what information we get on there. Okay, I got that mouse event. I got all kinds of information, client X, client Y, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one way to tell where we clicked inside of it, and we've done a couple of different ways in this series, is to console log e dot page X. And then it's going to tell us exactly three, nine, six. It's telling us exactly the X coordinates on the actual page. However, if there was like some margin in between this items here, like margin 50 PX, if we really brought it out, then that would be off. We need to know where did they click inside of this thing, not on the page. So we just take start X is equal to E dot page X, but then we'll track the slider dot offset left. And that will just offset it. If there's 50 PX of margin in between the page and the item that we care about, then subtracting it will handle that offset for us. So then we can console log start X. And if I click right here, we should get a really low number, 18. If I click over here, we'll get a high number. Good. Then what's important about that is when we move our mouse, we should be able to console log start X over and over. See, it's 645, regardless of where I'm moving my actual cursor here. That's pretty cool. And then when I let go, we don't really care about it. Click again. Now it's 547. We care about that. The other thing that we need to sort of log at the time of click is the scroll. Because let's say I'm scrolled 200 pixels in, and then I want to scroll to the left and to the right of this div. Then we need to figure out where the initial scroll was when we started it. And that's what this other variable is for, which is scroll left. So we'll take this, we'll say scroll left is equal to slider.scroll left. And the reason why we're going to keep that in a variable is because it's going to move. If I go to the answer here, it's going to move, but we always need to go back to that initial state when it started, when you did that first click down. So we got our start X and we got our scroll left. We can take these console logs out of here. Good. Now we'll go down to our mouse move and start doing the work. So first of all, I like to take the event and then just call an E dot prevent default on it. And that will stop any like selecting of text that's inside of there or any of the sliding to the left or, right, or any other weird stuff that the browser might think you're actually trying to select some text that will stop it for us. Um, then what we need to do 
is figure out where the cursor is when they moved it. We already know where the cursor is when they initially click down, but we want to know where the cursor is when they move it to the left and to the right. So we'll say const x is equal to e dot page x minus slider dot offset left. That's the exact same code that we just used up here. Here we're using it to say where did they initially click. And here we're going to recalculate it every single time that we move the mouse. So now if we just console.log uh, x as well as uh, what was that other one called here? Start X. And a little tip here, if you want to know what those variables are, just throw them in a uh, object and you'll see the values. Now, when I click in the middle here, you see that the X value is changing and the start X is not changing at all. So we can simply then take that and I'm going to call that the walk. So let's say const walk is equal to we'll take the x value and subtract the start x. And this is going to tell us how far have we deviated from that initial space. So console log walk, get rid of that initial console log. And now we're seeing, ah, look at that. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to move 20 pixels to the right. So we've gone 20 pixels to the right. And then I'm going to go back and 20 pixels to the left gives me negative. So it's telling us how far have we deviated from that initial point. I wish I could put like a, a red dot there when you clicked, because then you can see exactly how far to the left and to the right you are working. So next up, what we need to do is actually change this div here to scroll. And we do that with the scroll left property. So we'll say slider dot scroll left is equal to. Now you might think, OK, we'll just set it to walk and let's see what that does for us. It, it kind of works, but like it's it's really jumpy. And, and the problem is that is we're recalculating the scroll left every single time. So the reason why we captured the scroll left value when we did that initial click is so we can reference it inside of this function. So we'll take slider dot scroll left and set it to the scroll left value, which is what we initially captured. We put it in a variable and then we minus the walk value. We give that a save here. Now we should be able to click and drag beautifully back and forth. If you feel like this is a lot of work just to get over, what you can then do is put this in parentheses and then multiply it by like three or something. So for every pixel moved, you're going to scroll the slider three pixels. And there you get a bit of a nice slider effect as we're going on in there. So I think that's it for what we've got going on here. Looking pretty good. It's a Simple-ish code. However, actually building this the first time uh, took me a while to understand. Oh, you need to put these variables. You need to capture them at the time of your mouse down and then reference them whenever someone moves the mouse. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, obviously, there's a lot more to libraries. If you take a look at this one right here, you can just kind of like flick it and you don't have to worry. Um, and it really gives me appreciation for people who build like bouncy scrolling and inertial scrolling. You see how like it kind of fades out at the end. There's a lot of math that goes into building these different libraries, but it's really important to know how they're working sort of under the hood in case you ever wanted to build your own. I should also note that with this sort of mouse down, mouse leave, mouse up, mouse move dance that we've done here, you can also implement your own drag and drop. So if that's something you're interested in doing, I would challenge you to do that. Thanks a lot. I'll see you tomorrow.